hand. Come on. What are you doing here? I thought you understood Rick doesn't want you even near this place. Hey, no sweat, kid. I'm not here to see Rick Weber. I'm here to talk to you. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I'll make it short, sweet, and simple. If you want to keep Packy breathing, you'll throw your fight with Attila. What are you talking about? I repeat, take a dive, or Packy's a dead man. See you, kid. Hey. Hey, get back here! Hey, you scum! Pull it, creep! I'd love to, but as fate would have it, I'm visiting a geologist in Rochester today. Well, as fate has it, darling, any time is a good time for oil. I see that. <laughs> hey, listen, don't worry about a thing here. We can manage. Besides, we're all a bit curious regarding Holly's land. Yes, where is the Anglophile? Huh? I haven't missed an entrance yet. Well, you haven't uh, missed an exit either. Uh, it's up to the director. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm chomping at the bed. Don't you want to change? Change what? Your togs. Not that I don't like your taste. It's just that. Well, I always heard that variety was the spice of life. There's an American cliche. So you've been in our primitive country long enough to learn all the inanities. I still would have expected a little more elaborate wardrobe. Um, new money. No correction. New money. New money today. As soon as we find out that our suspicions are correct. Oh, I hope so. I'm definitely getting excited, so I'm trying not to. It seems preposterous that there would be oil on that land. Well, we'll know. As soon as we talk to Van Gelder, they say he's the best geologist in the state. I can't wait. Me too. Let's go. Well, goodbye. Good luck. Break a leg. Bear up. Bear up. Break a leg. Hello. Uh, Van Gelder speaking. Uh, will you speak up, please? We seem to have a bad connection. Yeah, yes, that's better. My wife. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry. Uh, she's out of town for a few days visiting her mother. I, uh, I can take a message if you... She what? No. Is it serious? I, I, I understand. What hospital? Y yes, I, I'm on my way. I'll be there within the hour. Y y thank you for calling.
sometimes, Robert, you can be just a little bit too obliging. Well, what did I do now? Well, for one thing, you let Luke go after that geologist man. We could have used him here. Look, sweetheart, we can manage. Besides, I hardly heard you urging him not to go. Hey, some guy there with some uh, trunks of costumes wants to know what to do with them. I'll show him. Uh, wait a minute, Robert. What's up? I need help here. Yeah, help me unpack this. Here. But, but, but look, I've only got five pair of hands. You know, one thing at a time, huh? The and there's something I want to talk to you about. We need more help around here, and I'm not just talking about today, permanently. Especially since my social life is beginning to sparkle again. You want to roll again, are you, Tiff, huh? You know perfectly well I had a date with Noah Drake the other night. Yeah. And I assure you, it won't be my last. Poor Noah. He hardly realizes you're moving in for the kill, even as we speak. All oh, men need a little nudging every now and then. I just intend to make sure that Noah gets it. <laughs> Therefore, I cannot be here every night. I don't intend to let Noah dangle. Hey, I'd dangle for you any time. Oh, you're so sweet, Blackie. But, Robert, do you see what I mean? Blackie here's sweet. No, silly, that we need help around here. Well, well what about Laura? Now that she's working for EOQ, darling, I doubt that she has any time. Mm. As a matter of fact, that's where she is right now. She's in New York doing some business for them. Besides, we have to have more than one hostess. I simply cannot be here every night. Wait a minute. What am I kind of idea here? How about a host? I'm going to hate myself for asking this, but who have you got in mind? You're looking at him, the kid, do a little host work. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. No offense, darling, but we need someone with a little bit more savoir-faire than you. Huh? Yeah, well, whatever that is, I'm up to here with it. You're Watch up to this. here with a lot of things, yeah. I learned this in a movie. Okay. Well, very good diver. So nice to see you. We have your seats right here. How's that? Cool, huh? Listen, this is a respectable joint, not a cafeteria. So what? I can put... Okay, I'll throw a little French in. Merci beaucoup to you, too. Cool, right? That's fantastic. Yeah, that's wonderful. I would have thought that was Maxim straight out of Brooklyn. It I did. It had such richness, such body. You know, I, 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 I could smell the it, 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 it. I ain't got all day. You want these costumes, or don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. We forgot all about it. Let's go see what wonderful things You, too, guys. Yeah. Yes. All right. We need it, Steve, and that laser to quit badly. Well, don't worry about it, Rick. It's just a matter of wearing them down. All right. Hello, Dr. Hardy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Rick. Amy. Hi. Hi. Well, it's been a long time since I've seen the Weber family all together again. Does this mean a return to the status quo? Oh, well, we have our ups and downs, but right now... Wait a second. Uh, yeah, right now we're fine. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Rick. Rick, yes. Dr. I'm sorry. Easy now. Uh, uh, Johnny, this is the second time you've almost run me I'm, down. I'm sorry, Dr. Hart. Rick, I, am I glad to see you? I gotta talk. You look What's wrong? I am. It's Hand, Anthony Hand. came to the sports center. I'm sure you told him to get out. Right? I hardly had the chance to. He... he told... Everything he said it, I've just been going crazy. Relax. Okay, okay, fine. What did he say? He said, either I take a dive or Packy's dead. What? Okay, that does it. Now the whole thing gets turned over to the police. No, we don't need the police. I'll take care of Hand myself. What are you, a crazy person? We're talking about dangerous men here. Johnny, what are you going to do? Cancel the fight. Hey, we are not going to bow down to somebody's threats. I will take care of Hand. Last, I'm scared. Yeah, so am I. Do me a favor. See if you can find Joe Kelly and ask him if he can come over here to see me right away. You got it. Anything for me? Well, only abstractly, Monica. There's a card here from Alan, but it's uh, addressed to me. But he notes he's uh, having a wonderful time. Alan was always so original. <coughs> well, you... Phrases. You may be interested to know that he also adds, uh, and now I quote, glad nobody is here, unquote. If that was meant to reassure me, Edward, you're wasting your time. Mm. You consider a uh, tender message from your spouse a waste of time? <laughs> I consider waiting for Alan to make any kind of decision regarding my life a waste of time. You know, it seems to me he's already done that. He made his choice. His choice is anything but clear, Edward. I mean, we also have to consider, uh, what's her name? Right across the way, not to mention the squinty-eyed son she bore him. Oh, Monica. Susan and the child are purely academic. Oh. I mean, he's paid them off. Oh, correction, Edward, no. The Quartermains paid them off. If that's, in fact, what happened, how much did you pay them? How would I know? <laughs> Edward, come on. You, who was born spouting the Dow Jones Stock Exchange. Oh, well, never mind. You need to tell me. I'm sure if Alan did, in fact, set up a trust fund, my lawyer can find out exactly how much it was. 
fact, it might be an excellent indication of exactly where Alan's heart really lies. Monica, Hi, you're I... still here. Oh, dear, I'm so glad. I thought you'd be at the hospital by now. No, I had some late appointments, but I do have to get moving. Oh, that's too bad. I've got so much to tell you about Southampton. And I want to hear all about it later, okay? Oh, mm -hmm. I'm glad you're back. I missed you so. Oh, oh thank you, dear. See you thank later. You. What a sweet thing to say. Yeah, well, Monica's all heart, Lila. I thought you knew that. Oh, I do, dear. And it was she who made me make the right decision. Yeah? What was that? Well, I came home, dear. This family has been at six and sevens for far too long. So here I am, and I intend to bring us all up by our bootstraps. Darling, I have no idea what you're talking about. We're going to be a family again, dear. Mm. Starting with the weekly dinners. <laughs> the Quartermains are a family again, just as soon as Alan gets home. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I could look at their paper? Sure. Would you mind if I take it? Thank you. Be my guest. Thank you. <laughs> Reading the funny? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised. Surprised that I went to the ladies' room? No, I'm surprised you came back. You've been gone since February. I fussed. Mm. Do you know your reputation precedes you? Even the waitress here told me that uh, you have disappeared from much stranger places than the loo. The loo? <laughs> you speak English. Apparently, yes. Grab some coffee, please. Would you like some pie, too? No, thanks. Just coffee. I'm not hungry. Okay. No, I've been thinking. About oil? In a way. About my father, actually. I know this could be really ironic. What could? Well, my father was a wildcatter, chasing anywhere and everywhere after all, but never finding it. Now it turns out maybe he found it, but he'll never know. You make him sound like the ultimate cavalier. Nah. The word is drifter and loser. Well, he isn't a loser if there's oil on his land. His dream could come true. But you'll never know it. But you will. And not the way my life's been running so far. I was always the kid who, say, if it had been raining $20 gold pieces, I'd have been out there, but I wouldn't have had a basket with me to pick them up. At. What do you want me to say? My heart bleeds for you? Didn't ask you to say anything. Do you like feeling sorry for yourself? I didn't say that. Well, it sure sounds like it. Forget it. Thank you. You know, do you think you're the only person that had a hard time as a kid? You think you're the only one that's had uh, life rough? You know, you talk about losing. My old man wrote the book on losing babies. What about your mother? She was beautiful. She gave me the one thing that I can always count on. What? Courage. Where's yours? You know, kids that grow up with a drifting father, those that survive, they always have one thing in common. Because as kids, they grew up with one thing that they could hold on to, one thing that kept, you know, couldn't be ripped out from under them, that couldn't be stored in a trunk. It didn't matter who the schoolmates were or how many times you changed schools. There was always one thing you could hold on to, and that is your imagination, your dreams. Where are your dreams, Holly? Why can't you hold on to your dreams? Yeah, in fact, I'm supposed to page her the second you get here. Joe, it's, it's 
real heavy. Uh, yeah. Could you Hand, he came over to the Dr. sports Leslie center Weber, and he laid it out cold. Second floor desk. He said if I didn't throw my fight with Attila, in fact, he's a dead man. Dr. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. You're not. Well, ever since he said it, I've been going crazy. You know, I've known Han and his boys for a long time. They play rough, and they always have. Uh, oh, Joe, thank you. I just couldn't get away. Johnny just told me about Han. Does Rick know about all of this? Rick's gone to have it out with Han, Les. That's exactly why I wanted to see you. He doesn't know anything about dealing with people like that. He's a doctor. He's going to get himself in trouble if he isn't already. Uh, you're the last person I should have to tell. He does know how to take care of himself. He doesn't have to. In this instance, Johnny was threatened. We have the police to deal with things like Did that. Did anybody mention taking it to the police? Maybe to Bert Ramsey? Yeah, well, let's suggest it. And? <laughs> I might as well have been talking to the wall. You know how bullheaded he can be. Yeah, well, there's another word. I mean... He's a bit quixotic. Maybe if he sees something wrong, he likes to just not stop until he sees it right. Sure. Uh, Charging off with his lance to tilt at windmills without a thought to his own safety or the people who worry about him. Did you say any of this to him? He knows how I feel. I didn't sink in. Oh, he thinks I just want him to get out of the fight game. Do you? Yes. You ever thought about the consequences of that? I mean, if he were to pull out right now, a lot of people would be disappointed. Johnny, not to mention a few others. Yeah, but Joe, I mean, I want that fight. But I don't want anybody to get hurt, especially Rick. What do you want, Leslie? I want you to talk to him and see if you can get him to come down off his white charger long enough for the police to see what's going on here. I'll try. Joe, I love him. I want nothing more than to see him happy. I want to see all of us happy. I want to see me happy, too. He knows that. Yeah. And why doesn't he care how I feel? And what do you mean going to the sports center and threatening Johnny? Do you think you and your strong arm antics or anybody else are going to stop me? You are crazy. Tell me, doctor. You always burst into a man's office yelling like that. Well, I have just cause, and I got plenty right now. I would like to break you in half. Try it. You ever been worked over, Doc? Come on. Lay a finger on me. So your goons will come crawling out of the woodwork? Is that it? Well, yeah. That's your plan? Yeah, that'll be the day when I need help taking you on. But right now, I got a suggestion. You're a surgeon? And I'm a respectable businessman. So let's act like that, hmm? Now, what's your beef? You told John to take a dive. If he's not going to take a dive, you're going to kill Packy. <laughs> Wait you hear a wild Come story on, you like saw that. John, and you threatened his life. Come on, you dreaming, Doc. Well, I suppose now you're going to tell me it didn't happen, right? You weren't there today. You didn't see Johnny. I don't go in for strong-arm stuff like that. I told you. I'm a respectable businessman. And respectable businessmen go around threatening people. I understand. Did Johnny tell you that? That's what I've been saying since I walked in here. I think your boy's been hitting the head once too often. His brains are soft. We're not getting very far, are we? Get one thing straight. No fighter of mine is going to take a dive. And nobody's going to get killed. Nobody at all unless you, you personally, Mr. Hand, are ready to take the rap for it. You got that? Yeah. What are you, a cop or something? You push me around, you're gonna see a lot of cops. You know something? We disagree on that. Why don't you just shut up? And if I were you, I would get out of this right now. Why well, you still can? In one piece. Hey, Doc! You know, those are, uh, those are pretty tough words. But now I got some advice. You quit now. Because you're getting in way over your head. You get my picture. You're headed for deep water, Doctor. And you just might drown. I like a tie. Professor Van Gelder. Yes, I am Frank Van Gelder. Hi, I'm Luke Spencer. This is Holly Sutton. Oh, yes, I've been expecting you. Please, come in. Thank you. We really appreciate your seeing us, Professor. Oh, nonsense. Make yourselves comfortable. Go on into the study. Thank you. Unfortunately, my, uh, my wife's away, so I can't do very much about refreshments. Here, try some of these nuts if you like. They're my one regrettable weakness. Thanks. Perhaps later. 
Now then, you say you had something to show me? Yes, we brought a map. This is the Port Charles area. I have Mark Hawley's property for you. So let's take a look at it. Now, you believe there's oil here, here where you've marked the lines? Yes, that's right. Uh, impossible. Well, I'm sorry, but it is possible, because we saw it. On the surface? Yes, but it was coming up from below the ground. Well, there could be many explanations for that, Mr. Spencer. Sure, and one of them is that there's oil down there. Never. Well, what makes you so sure? You know, Mr. Van Gelder has given us his answer. He has not explained it. Well, I see that you're a persistent young man. I just like to know what people are talking about. Well, I do happen to know what I'm talking about. And if you want a thumbnail uh, description of it, I'm not only familiar with the area, but I know what's beneath the surface. How? Have you dug there? No, but the conclusions are inescapable. Now, you're referring to the whole general area. I am. What about Holly's property specifically? Well, not the uh, specific area where you've drawn the lines, no. Well, then you can't be absolutely certain that there's no oil down there without running a test. Yes, even in an exact science, there's some room for error. Would you be willing to come to Port Charles and do a test on that uh, land? We'll be happy to pay you. That's not important, but you know what intrigues me is your conviction. What makes you so sure there's oil there? Uh, well, I, it's a hunch. Ah. Well, I'm a scientist, and uh, I urge you not to waste your money trying to prove you're right. Well, look, I appreciate your uh, looking out for my finances, but it's my money to waste. You know, you're a very determined young man. I like that. So much so, in fact, that I will come to the property and I will make a definitive test. You will? That's not just as soon as I can get away. Now, let me warn both of you, though, that uh, a hunch is not the most reliable way to discover oil. Yeah, I understand that. I do appreciate your coming in giving us a more reliable way, because I have a very strong feeling that this land is the answer to our dreams. 